Jungkook. I fired the man charging at the little human. The bullet hit his hand, taking a chunk of it. Everyone in the warehouse alerted. The security outside was only two guards. I entered with my men. We fired and I went to the little human while my men covered me. I saw him looking at me with his eyes wide. That son of a shackled him. I shot the metal toys and it broke free from his hand. I want my mom. He cried, backing away. Yes, little human, I'm going to take you to your mom. I told him and he recognized my voice because he fell on my chest and hugged me. Though I kind of despised it, I backed away as my men gave me cover. I can't catch that piece of shit this time. One, I have is this human right here. Second, he is hiding like a coward. I held him to me and tried to trespass the guards. My men fired back as a drill broke broke out. The situation got heated. A bullet ran near my head, straight to a weak piece of aiming at me while hiding. I turned my head and a petite figure stood there. Not to mention a pale figure. She fired her machine gun. Mommy! Dante shouted in my arms. Of course, he knows his mom even if she's hiding behind a mask. A man attacked her and she ran out of bullets. As he got to her, she tackled him down, straddling and bringing out a knife from her ankle. She slit the pearls point of, him, of the man, just a precise neck. Her eyes shows her citizen, and she stares at the man bleeding and thrashing, asking for mercy. Soon his movements slowed down and she got up like a warrior. Dante pushed away from me and ran away to her. I cursed. That's the reason I don't like cats. I ran after him. Mommy, he shouted. Ryan looked at him and then to her right. No! Her shriek was deafening and before I could realize a bullet hit Dante and he fell on his knees. No! Dante, she screamed. We both reached him at the same time. I covered his shoulder where he had been shot. Ryan hugged him to her chest. No, 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 baby. Mommy, look, look at mom, she cried. No, don't close your eyes, baby. I'm here. Mommy is here. My good boy, my love, please don't, she sobbed. Back off, I whispered in the microphone attached to my vest. I picked the little human from her and ran outside while holding her. I had, had to basically drag her while when I reached the car, I held her face in my one bloody hand. Get to your senses. He needs you. She didn't react, so I basically had to shove her in the car. On my way, I called the doc and asked him to prep. I gave him the details, and he asked his blood group. What's his blood group? I asked her, and she just kept staring at her child in my lap. Ryan, I shouted, and she looked at me, her eyes so vacant. Blood group, I asked gently. Oh, oh, negative. She sh choked on her words. She told me and kept looking at her at her son in my lap. Not once she tried to touch him. I told the doctor and kept pressuring the wound to avoid bleeding. After almost 20 minutes, we reached the wing. I rushed him to the OT room that I had made in the west side. I put him on the bed with wine on my tail. I tried to take her out and that's when she broke. No, my son is there. I won't leave him alone. He needs his mom. He wants his mom. She tried to break free from my hold as I dragged her out. No, please. She sobbed, holding onto my bicep and slid down the floor. My child, she cried. No, she wailed. Shh. I tried to console her, which was weird because I never do that. And the words slipped from my lips. He's going to be all right. I don't do that. I live in present. I don't dwell on the future or the inevitable. If he dies, he dies, but there was this urge that I do to understand was swelling as I watch her wail on my chest. I want these tears to go away. I want to burn the whole world in her wake. She fisted my vest. Her breathings came in pants. She was panicking. I slapped her cheek lightly. Look at me. Look at me. She listened on the second time. I held her face in both hands, hair sticking to her face, and I pushed them back. Calm down. Over there, all he wanted was you, so you better get your together. Are you listening to me? I asked, and she nodded so slightly.
Tears didn't stop, and an itch started on my hand. I wiped my tongue over those tears. Another way left her lips, and she hid her face in my chest. My heart is threatening to explode. I can't calm down. She spoke while crying. Her words were muffled due to hiding her face. I picked her and took her to the room next to the OT. She didn't leave me for a single second as if I'm her anchor, which I'm not. Her sobs went away and her tears dried, but she stood in her gloomy state. A nurse came running and her head that was leaning on my chest rose up. Dante, she whispered, we need blood. There is no negative here available to it first. She spoke. His blood group is rare, my baby. My, she again started panicking. Calm down, I told her. My blood group is O negative, take mine. Wine looked at me with those gleaming eyes. Come with me, please, the nurse told him. I'll be back. Be good. I told her and she looked at me with those tears and the emotions. I don't understand. She didn't move her eyes from me. I gave blood and came out to find her sitting on the floor in front of the door. Hey, why are you? She cut me off. How is he? Is he okay? Tell me he's fine, please. She spoke, holding my hands. The door opened and the dog came out. She got up, wincing. My son? She asked him instead. He's out of danger, but we keep him under observation for 24 hours. He saved him. Your son is actually rare. You should be thankful that his heart is on the right side or he wouldn't have made it. He told her and with a nod, he went away. I stepped behind her and she leaned into me. He's going to be okay, she whispered, tears still falling down her cheeks. Thank you. I owe you for this. She spoke in a broken voice. You owe me a lot of things, I whispered back, wrapping my arm around her waist. I felt something wet on my arm, and when I looked down, it was blood. I jacked her around. I kneeled and peeled off her black shirt. Wine. I grind her out her name. I picked her and took her to the room next to Dante. I placed her on the bed. Dante, she whispered, I want to see him. She choked on a sob. I went to the window and removed the curtain from it. The glass gave her a clear view of her son, breathing tube down his neck. My baby, I'm sorry, she sobbed. I will cover the window if you cry like that and blame yourself. I threatened her while grinding my molars. No, just to whisper. She refused to drink anything earlier. I grabbed a bottle from the mini fridge and gave it to her. She gulped down barely two sips and gave it back to me. I caved it and put it on the side. I will fix your wound and you won't cry, I told her, but she didn't acknowledge me and kept looking at her son. I treated her wound and she kept staring at her son. I couldn't help but wonder. This is how a mother loves her child. My mother never acted like that. I remember when I broke my arm when I was eight and had trouble using my right hand. She told me I could. You have another hand, use that. How? Is that, or is it normal? But her love or anything she has for her son is making me question my life. Is she a drama queen? My just judgment is no. She was just shot yesterday and got up for her son the very next day. I just say the very moment she opened her eyes. Is it supposed to be that intense? Well, I am intense, but have I ever felt so strong that's the problem i don't feel but now what is happening what was that intense need to flip the earth i'm intense but not like that i do everything for myself for my sake and this one's i wanted to do it for her right now i would pay a fortune to have her normal like before i just see the fire in her eyes but Everything depends on the other human. He is the one to decide that, and I'm sure he will do what I want, since that's my blood running in his veins now. He needs to be protected now, under my wing. My blood comes with the perks of life threats. He will know. Wine. Dante, 
I called him. Dante, where are you going? I asked as he kept walking in the woods. Dante, come to mommy, love. I called him again. He turned around and looked at me. A gasp left my lips as I saw him. There were tears. No, blood tears flowing down his face. Before I could recover, he turned around and started walking. Dante, stop! I called him, but he kept on walking. Baby, come to me! I shouted as he kept going far from me. I tried to run, and someone stopped me from going to him. He kept on walking. No! Don't go there. Stop, baby. I yelled, but he didn't listen. I tried to pull away, and they kept holding on to me. No, baby. There's no ground out there. I yelled, and he stopped just at the edge of the cliff. He turned around, and he stared at me. He stared at me as if reaching for my soul, and jumped off. No! I jerked awake. My breathing came in pants. Dante, I whispered. I tried to get off the bed and a strong pair of arms wrapped around my shoulder. Stay still, he spoke. Don't you dare move, he told me strictly. No, Dante, he, he was, he cut me off. He's all right, doing fine. Doc just came and checked his vitals. They are normal. They are just waiting for him to open his eyes. He told me and everything came back, rushing to me. His house, Dante, blood, his blood, widow. I peeked from his side and saw my baby lying there with an oxygen mask. I sighed and sniffed. I take a huge breath to counter my tears. I'm doing that a lot in front of him. The devil, like in the king. Yet I still don't know his name. I stayed there for some time. He tried to feed me something, and I refused, but he threatened me, and I wanted to fight him. I really do. But I feel like it has been drained out of me. I just want my baby to wake up and call me, drive me bonkers. He tried to feed me some yogurt, and I told him I can eat it myself, but him being him, had to take the rain and feed me. I went to my baby and sat by him. He's pale. His lips are dry. I held his tiny hand in mine. A tear left from my eyes as I caressed his hand and placed a kiss on the back of his hand. Less than two days and I'm dying to see his toothless smile. I want his yelling, his sulking back. Please, God, please give me my baby back. I made a silent prayer. I felt a presence behind me. And I don't need to turn to know who is. He is like a rock. His presence is like a heavy vibe. He carries this energy, the dominant energy. I don't know if it's for everyone, but I know when I came under his vicinity. The hair on my neck rises when he lays eyes on me. If I don't know, it. My body is well aware of it. This prickling sensation on the back of my neck is the evidence of that feeling. He just stood there for what felt like hours, but it was only a few minutes. When he was two years old, he fell from his high chair. I looked at him, and he was silently observing me. I was feeding him, and when I was done, I took the table thing off to clean it and it was just a quick turn of putting the table on the countertop and he was on the floor he tried to jump and fell he hit his head he bled a lot i took him to the doctors and they also needed blood for him and of course his blood was rare i only had hope and it took three days to find a blood donor for him because his father refused to give him blood at that time, his money was more important than our child. And he said he won't waste his blood on him. Emotions cloaked my thought and I bit my low lip. I looked at him again and he was still staring at me. But there was an antsy feeling on his face, just a twitch in his eye and the rest of it impassive. Thank you for saving him. I can't. I can't thank you enough for that.
My son is my life, I told him and just silently listened. He just silently listened to me. I can't be grateful enough for what he did for me and my child. Almost like a hero, his head is a messed up place. My thoughts came to a screeching halt when I felt a movement in my hand. Dante moved his hand. Dante? I called him, standing up and looking at his face. Baby? He slowly but surely opened his eyes. I smiled through tears. My baby? I caressed his fore hair and forehead. The doctor appeared and I assumed he summoned him. He checked my baby and his, as he kept holding my hand. That brought life back to me. He's fine, the doctor declared. I smiled and thanked the doctor. Mommy? Dante whispered. Yes, baby, I asked. Can I get as many gummy bears as I want now since I'm sick? That little... I chuckled. You can have as many as mommy gives you. I told him and he sighed dramatically. Don't worry, mate. I can convince your mom. A velvety timber rolled out from my shoulder, sending shivers in its wake. I looked at him with a raised eyebrow and he also raised one challenging me scratch that scratch the hero thingy he's still the same annoying jerk king or not okay so guys that is it for this one hope you guys liked it and enjoyed it. and i know it was a little emotional but i should have posted it on mother's day but a little late okay so that is it see you next week hope you guys like it if you do go ahead and comment down below how you like it also hit the like button come on man and also subscribe and also share man i just i'm just waiting go ahead go do it right now you did it okay thank you so much love you so see you next time bye